at some point, you have to transition from this high-speed digital interface where, say, single-ended signals are commonly used to what you might call serial speed. And this is the point where everything becomes differential. Um, you have to think about your design differently. Eventually, you'll reach a speed where, where even the uh, traditional serial interconnects won't suffice. And this is, uh, this is what uh, I would call the hyperspeed environment. And, and so the way you actually you have to specify and design interfaces like this is fundamentally different from how you would do it, say, for a serial interface, a high-speed digital, or a low-speed. Now, the, the, the points at which each of these different memory technologies crosses these critical thresholds varies. Now, for lower-speed memories, embedded mobile flash, uh, they actually hit the signal integrity threshold a couple of years ago when the LPDDR1 systems were starting to run above 267. So, for example, on most uh, memory packages, there is no ground plane. Uh, they may be only one or two layers in order to save space and allow you to make uh, really thin tablets or cell phones. What that basically means is that the connection between the controller and the memory uh, essentially might as well be wire wrap wire. Uh, it's going to be a very high impedance, very high crosstalk, very, very noisy environment. And so you don't have to be running at a very high speed in order to really run into signal integrity considerations. Things that used to be second and third or fourth order effects are now becoming first order effects. So for instance, in a low speed design where you hit place and route uh, and everything works, you move to a high speed design where you have to really worry about balancing lengths on traces and stuff. You have to worry about how much noise is in the system. Those things were second order effects in low speed designs. Now they're first order effects. When you go to serial, things like, like uh, the amount of jitter uh, might have been a, or variance in timing, that, that might not have been a, a major uh, concern. But now in the high speed realm, uh, that becomes a first order effect. Things like uh, via construction, uh, even things like how much solder is applied to, to, the, uh, uh, to connectors, or how a device is actually attached to a board, can have an impact on signal integrity. Things that uh, is something that you may have never worried about before, but now is something that you have to have to think about ahead of time. As you draw on these techniques that are used in the RF and microwave world, uh, things like jitter, uh, noise, uh, con at the higher speeds, concepts like, like phase noise, paying attention, close attention to the geometries. Um, simulation now becomes a very critical part of the design process. And so what you're seeing is that many teams uh, are actually now turning to the same tools that have been used for years by microwave and RF designers to design their digital interfaces. So another way that, that these uh, revolutions in, in design and test uh, show up is in the introduction of what's called DFX circuitry or capabilities to memory controllers. DFX stands for really uh, design for test, design for manufacturing, design for validation. And, and this consists largely of adding test modes and control hooks uh, into the memory controller or PHY that allows you to more efficiently generate, uh, say, repeatable test conditions, uh, repeatable stimulus, uh, to be able to, for instance, look at the signal that uh, is on the other side of the equalizer, to adjust things like voltage and timing to determine how much margin you might have in, in your receiver design. Uh, often these are used in system, uh, particularly during the, the memory power on and training sequences. So much of, the, much of the circuitry that's required to be able to either create stimulus for the instruments, for instrumentation to measure, or to be able to examine, for instance, a, a stressed signal uh, that is sent to a receiver to determine if the receiver is picking it up correctly or not. Often these circuits are also required to complete the training sequences uh, that are defined by the memory standard. And so doing things like uh, being able to adjust uh, voltage thresholds, being able to adjust timing, being able to uh, check, either generate or check for specific sequences of bit patterns. Uh, these are becoming important capabilities to support uh, the 
measurement of the controller's capabilities and also uh, how well it interoperates with the memories.